Good morning and welcome to the Small Business Cheerleader podcast. I'm Nicola from NW Marketing, the Small Business Cheerleader, and I'm joined today by Casey Squires. Uh, She's from Casey Squires Coaching and she is a visionary communication expert. And we're going to be talking all things signature talk and why you need one for your business. How are you today, Casey? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on, Nicola. It's really exciting to be a part of your podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I have not spoken before about signature talk, so I'm excited to dive deep and find out what a visionary communication expert does and why signature talk is important. So uh, let everyone know how you got to be in this space and and what lights you up about um, communication. Yeah, I guess I've been involved in telling stories for a very long time. I've always been really interested in it. And um, to tell you to tell you a little story I got one of well I got a dream job essentially in my early 20s and it kind of came out of nowhere it wasn't really kind of where I was doing at the time but I feel like it just was guiding me in the right direction so I got this job where I was going to go around and I was going to talk in high schools and teach uh, teenagers about life skills. So really, I was going to go out and be a speaker going around to schools all over Australia and teaching these really important skills to teenagers. So this is where I really cut my teeth in speaking. And anyone who's ever spoken in front of teenagers knows that it's a pretty hard job. Um, So it was brilliant. I mean, I was thrown in with all these really other inspirational young people and we were out there, you know, helping the next generation to develop. But what I found at that time was that I would go into both um, co-ed schools and single sex schools. And at the time I was going into these um, just girls schools. And when we went into the girls schools, we'd be talking about things like um, managing your money, managing your mobile phone, you know, these kind of life skills. And the girls would get into these really big discussions and, and deep conversations about their life and how things were going and how they had, you know, had these massive mobile phone bills where their parents had gone crazy and this was back in the day when um, your mobile phone was managed a little bit different than it is today but they were they were just having these really interesting stories and and we're having these deep discussions and then I'm going to co-ed schools and what I found when I was going in between the two is that in the co-ed schools the girls at that time weren't really giving these same stories they weren't kind of talking about all these Um, deep things that were going on in their lives the same way that they were in the single sex schools and I felt that they were kind of putting themselves back a little bit and I thought this was an interesting um, thing at the time I was just like oh it's funny that we're having these different conversations and as I got a bit older I started doing different things and at one point I was um, working for a university and I was curating some university speakers uh, for a program And I found similar things started to emerge. I would ask both men academics and female academics uh, to come and share their wisdom um, for students, what I was doing at the time. And the men would always be like, yeah, no problem. I'll come, not a problem. And I found some of the women would would go, oh, what should I talk about? And they want a little bit of help um, with their presentations and, so I started to see the same thing emerge, that the women were a little bit a little bit put back by sharing their stories and sharing their expertise and their wisdom. So this was all kind of just sitting in my head, floating around. Uh, and then going forward, I got a really brilliant opportunity myself. I had been in touch with uh, a professional speaker that I used to know, and he had called me one day and said, Casey, I've got um, too much on my plate and I've got these workshops and I'd really love you to... Um, help me run some of them. And I was like, this is amazing. Yes, I'll definitely do it. But um, what I what happened was he got me to come out and watch one of his workshops and I recorded it so that I could get into it. And what I did was I literally sat there for hours and I wrote word for word what he was saying so that I could deliver the same thing. And suddenly I realized I was doing the same thing. I was not standing in my own voice and I was putting myself back and not trusting that I could do, you know, share my own story and do the job that way. So I started to go, hang on, I'm doing the same thing here and and something needs to change. 
So that's when I started using my voice more in my own, stepping into my own power. And I was um, going out and I was doing all these workshops. But what I found was that the things that I was speaking on, it wasn't always aligned. I was talking on this and that and everything and it didn't feel like a clear message. So I went for searching for someone to help me with that clear message. And again, I couldn't really find it. I couldn't find someone who could help me to hone my message, write my signature talk so I could get out there. I felt like I had something on to share. I just didn't know exactly what it was. And I realized that there was a whole lot of women in the same place as me. They were looking to share a message. They know there's something inside them that they want to share and that they just didn't have anyone to say, hey, I see these links and I think that this is the important thing for you to share. So that's what I decided to fill that space and start doing. And it's been amazing. The women I work with, they have so much to share, but they're just not sure of the specific message and the story that backs it up at the moment. So that's kind of how I got to where I am and why I feel so passionate about it, because women's stories really need to be shared and they really need to be out there. Oh, I love that because it is. And when you find an aligned uh, voice topic that is you're passionate about, it comes across so easily and with flow, doesn't it? Because you really do feel the um uh, that you're going to make a difference in people's lives and I think that that if we can come from instead of saying oh people don't want to listen you know to me talking if you can think about that one person who might listen to your story and and really be inspired to change their own lives or to actually do something different or to experience something they haven't before I think that that's so important and as you say a signature talk is something that is aligned to you and something where you can go out and use your voice to make an impact yeah. um, so, so explain what is a signature talk how when we say that what does that mean um, for those that might not be really um, across all of the terminology yeah so um, the signature shocks that I work on with um, the women I work with generally we we develop it for around 20 to 30 minutes it's a talk that is really it's not exactly what you do in your business but it's kind of like that higher purpose it's it's about what you really believe in and it does connect to your business so it's 20 30 minutes it's a talk that encompasses your story so a really strong captivating story of how you got to where you are or something that aligns with the audience who's listening as well as your frameworks you know how can you help someone to get to where you are essentially today from where they are at the moment um, and also that you know that really strong core message and it's it's something that you can have in your tool belt that you can just go out and it's repeatable it's really captivating and um, it's just something that that aligns with your the audience so you're really looking at your ideal clients when you're thinking about writing your signature talk yeah I love that because I do a lot of work with my clients on getting the foundations of their why together mm. why they're in business to find aligned offers that you know light them up and then to find ideal clients that need that solution that they can offer yeah. and having clarity around that well, then um, similar to what you're saying in creating the, the why and the framework and the, the results that you can give people, yeah. if, if you can have a succinct version of that, um, you are more likely to, to um, be able to make an impact on stage or keynote speaking or, or really uh, getting that word out bigger than just uh, your immediate, um, you know, ideal clients. You're going out to a bigger audience, aren't you, in that yeah. regard? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you're not just talking internally to people who are already in your, your world. You can have a bigger impact. You can talk to more people and bring them into what you're doing because they feel aligned with that message that you're sharing. Yeah. So it's, it's really a great way to have a wider reach, a bigger impact, step into that visionary, impactful leader of your industry that you love to be. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's why podcasting is so great as well, to be able to share your knowledge with other people um, and to get that out there and then to back it up. There's so many ways to speak on stage these days um, and keynote speaking. And a lot of people are talking within groups as well, you know, yeah. having masterclasses, guest speaking. It doesn't have to be on stage, yes. but it's that, as you say, that 20, 30 minute speech where you can have all of that framework put together and really get it across succinctly um, yeah. and knowing that you have it 
in such a way that people will understand it from beginning to end and see the result. And we're seeing storytelling come across in Instagram stories as well. People are using them as story sets and being able to tell their story succinctly across that platform too. So it's not just on stage, is it? It's also the stage of social media. And, and that's why, um, so why do you think it's important for business owners to be sharing their message, you know, on stage or in these other platforms? You know, what, what is the outcome that comes from, um, you know, taking that leap of faith in and backing yourself in speaking? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're completely on the money. I mean, in today's world, there's not just one stage that you can be on. Go back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, if you wanted to speak, you had to be invited to a conference, you had to speak on stage. Today, we have so many platforms. And when I talk about your stage, I'm not talking about just getting out in a face-to-face -face stage. It might be that virtual stage. It's really any kind of platform where you can share your message is, is a stage. So like you said, stories, all of those kind of things. And I think today it's so important to be doing that because people connect with people and we're getting that more and more, even though sometimes we're feeling more disconnected because we're on these virtual places, we still want to connect, which is bringing back to your story. So the importance and the, the results that you can get from getting out there and actually having your face seen is about having the experience with you. So if people hear your story, they hear you speak, they're seeing you out there, they can connect on a deeper level with you yeah I mean I've seen people uh follow story sets um online and and listen to podcast episodes with uh specific people and then they will um you know purchase straight away a program that they have because they just get them mm -hmm. and it's about isn't it when I talk about uh with my clients about building that messaging around your why and your aligned um message is that people will know you get them because yes. people want to work with people they like and the people they trust. Yeah. And I think a story does that, doesn't it? Because people can understand you've been where they are or you're aspirational, you're an expander, you're where people want to be. And yeah. I think that is where and what we're looking for these days is expanders of looking at for somebody's story and realising that it's possible for them too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I've, I'm in a place that you might have been at some point. And now, you know, I can see someone on stage, I can see someone who's speaking in their story, I can see someone on their, um, you know, Facebook Live, who's talking about being somewhere that I once was, but is now in this aspirational place that I'd love to be. And you connect with that. And that's why you want to get closer to them, and hear more about them and, and work with them, essentially. Yeah, that's it. And it's, um, it is, it's the inspirational part that I think um, a lot of times we get stuck in small business. Um, and these times, a lot of people are working from home, and they feel very disconnected um, in that regard. And I think that's where stories or podcasts and listening to people that might be in a similar situation allows you to know you're not alone, because it's a big world in small business, especially startup phase, you know, you really don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you're trying to put this thing that you want to make this impact you want to have in the world and and I love the fact um, when we're talking about storytelling in people that are starting out in sharing that journey I think there's a lot of importance in sharing the behind the scenes of how that comes together because that's a story too isn't it in how you actually are building something and people love to be along on a journey I find that I personally love that and I love seeing people um, it, it's not all perfect and I love to see people actually sharing that story yeah, well, and that's the other thing that we we connect with the the imperfectness of people as well. You know, we we don't want to see the polished, perfect version of everyone. We want to hear the struggles. We want to hear what you've you know potentially overcome. Maybe you haven't overcome it yet, um, but it's there's something that connects by speaking about it that is really important. And that's I mean that's what I'm so passionate about is is sharing those stories because we can learn so much from someone else's story, um, you know, rather than just thinking we have to go and tread the path and do everything ourselves. Sharing those stories means we can, we can bypass some of the, the difficulties because you hear someone else and where they've been and what they've done. And sometimes that can help you to get to your next level as well. Yeah, and that's like I'm saying, expanders are wonderful to have in your circle, those that have already been there, done that, and are one step ahead because you can really uh, collapse time and, and, and um, get to those levels you want to get to quicker than yes. trying to do it all yourself. 
Um, so when we're talking about if someone wants to start doing their signature talk, so they, they're not, you know, confident yet in showing up online talking about their story or they might feel like that no one wants to listen to it. How, how can they start formulating their own signature talk so that they have a framework, isn't it, essentially for what they can talk about and show up with? Yeah. So the first thing I would start working with someone on is their core message. So what is, the, what is that one message that you really want to share? Because this is the thing that I find a lot of the clients that come to me, they, they, they're not worried about public speaking, so to speak. They, they might be out there, might be talking on podcasts, doing various things, but it's all very disjointed. It's different mm. things. Someone says, come on my podcast. And they go, okay, I'll talk about that. And I can talk about this. And it's just not feeling really strong and aligned. So it's working on, you know, what is that core message, that one message that you want people when they walk in the room, they, they're not on board with it. And when they leave, they understand it because of what you've spoken about. Yeah, so that's that yeah. specific message. And that, that's exactly right. And that comes down to marketing as a whole now too. It's about becoming the go-to in your industry for mm. that specific thing, whatever that may be, yes. and really focusing on your niche. Um, I, that word gets used a lot, but it's really important in your messaging. Like you said, if you can be known as that one person for that one thing and you're the go-to, well, then yeah. you're obviously reducing down your target audience, but you're very specific on who that is and more likely to have an impact and I think that that's what people get scared of because they want to um, be everything to everyone but it just doesn't work and like you said if they're showing up talking about so say if I showed up on a podcast talking about Facebook ads and the next thing I know I'm talking about um, something else completely different people are like well I thought she was the that per, what you know and it, it just sort of um, dilutes your messaging I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely and I think that's the thing you know we do want to be everything to everyone and that's what's the beauty about working on your signature talk because you're not looking at it in terms of your niche you're looking at it in terms of a talk which starts to narrow your focus and message which the magic is that it actually works the other way where you start to go in my whole business I can narrow this focus and niche because I've worked on this area but I'm not thinking niche because people when they go niche they go oh no I'm going to cut out all these people and then I'm not going to have anyone that I can well yes you can um but let's not think about niche let's think about signature talk and let's think about a specific message that's important to you that you can talk about and the magic is that they get that and they go oh wow this actually can help my whole business and I feel aligned with this um so that's the really important important first piece of your signature talk yeah, that's exactly right. Because I just think niche at the moment, like I said before, it's just it just becomes a word that people are like either scared of or they've just heard way too many times. And they're like, yeah, yeah, niche, niche, whatever. Yeah. But how does that actually work? How do I actually do that? And that's what I think, like you're saying, you work with your clients on actually creating that aligned, um, you know, part of their business that they can talk about and be passionate about. Mm -hmm. And then they go, oh, right. Yeah, that's what you mean when you're talking about getting laser focused on a part of your business. Yes. It doesn't mean that you can't do all these other things in your business. That's what people get confused about, I think. Yeah. When you talk niche or signature talk or one thing you're aligned with, it doesn't mean that you have to cut everything else out. It's just that you're very laser focused on what it is that lights you up and what you talk about. Yeah. So people go to you for that thing. Like I, I'm passionate about getting people into their aligned why finding that out because yeah. only from there can you get deeper into your ideal client and really find the offers that will work. People start with all the sexy, shiny stuff, yes. you know, their branding and their website and their logo, and then they get there and they're, you know, a few months in and they've got crickets because yes. they haven't done any of the work. They've just bypassed it for the sexy stuff that they think they need. So yes. that's why I love this idea of a signature talk because it doesn't have to be about being on stage. It has to be about being aligned with why you're doing what you do and yep. then knowing how to talk about it so people get it. And I think that that's where the magic comes in. Yeah, oh, completely. It's, you know, I talk about signature talks, but there's so much that's in that. You know, it's about your message and it's about your story and it's about your frameworks. And if I said, oh, everybody, I'm talking about frameworks and I'm talking about story and I'm talking about message, it would all be diluted. But I talk about signature talks. Doesn't mean that other things don't happen when I work with my clients. And just like you're saying, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't do other things in your business, but getting clear on that one area means people 
they can look out and go, are, are they for me or are they not for me? Okay, yes, I need a signature talk, I'll go to her. Um, but if I was talking about all those things, it, it gets a bit confusing. So that's why it's so important. Oh, a hundred percent. You are, you know, preaching to the converted. I love it <laughs> so much because that is what I'm hundred um, percent behind back and am passionate about. And that I am the person that people go to if you want to get clear, yep. if you want to get clear on your marketing stuff. Yes, I do all the other stuff too. Yes. And yes, I can help you implement your tactics and all of that. But if I start talking about all of that, then I get lumped in with this massive, uh -huh. massive, amount of people and how do you stand out if that you know I'm not you know banging on about Facebook ads every day because it doesn't light me up <laughs> so, but for some people it does and yeah. that's what they're known for and that's what I'm talking about you want someone who's known for what it is that they do and yes. then it's easier for you to find them and then it's a matter of finding who you're aligned with isn't it because yeah. you know is she for me do I really get her does she get me and from showing up the only way you'll find out and only way to let people know and let them in a little bit into your story and why they should work with you because they will understand you and I think that that's important these days in particular oh definitely and that's that's the layers of it so your signature talk you've got your core message and then it goes to the next level of your story and that backs it up and then that's that never next level where people say are they for me well the message is aligned and I've heard their story. Yeah, now I'm feeling really engaged with them. Or maybe it doesn't align with them because it's not, they can't relate to it. So there's all these little elements that go, okay, you know, is someone going to align with you because of all these layers that we have that come out in your signature talk? And then you also have a really succinct, confident way that you can go out there and speak about it. And you, you're confident, you want to get out there, you want to share the message because you know you've worked on it, you've crafted it. It's not just, you know, something coming out of, out of your brain at the time. It's something that you know you can back up with, you know, real crafting and, and structure. Yeah, and I think that that's where people get lost. I think that's the hard part that people think it's hard. It's It just takes work, but yes. once it's done, it's a thing you can refine and a thing that will only give you clarity in how you show up. And that's what I think the hard part is. People don't know how to show up because they don't know what they're going to talk about. They yes. don't know what they're going to say. And I think that they just get scared that they'll just talk about rubbish and that people will just scroll past. Yep. And I think the more that they can get it succinct in what that framework looks like, it will become a repeatable um, message from you that people will go, oh, yeah, that's right. She spoke about that. Yeah, she does that. So when you show up again, isn't it, uh, whether it be on stories or online or in a masterclass in a group or you're talking to a group of business women at a networking event, you're the same person. Yes. And people go, oh, I saw her. I saw her online. Oh, no, I listened to that podcast she did. Yeah. They all come together and people forget that it is a big jigsaw puzzle. It's not just that one talk. It's how you show up on all multiple platforms with the same messaging that yes. eventually I know I worked with a coach that I've been following for 18 months because it was finally my time to work with her. I was ready for yes. whatever that was. But the story had built over 18 months where it was a no-brainer when the email came through with the latest offering. I'm ready now. Let's do this. Yep. So it's not an instant thing. That's what I love mm. to tell people. Please, storytelling is not instant. You're building rapport. You're building trust. And that can take time. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, just waiting till they're ready, you know, but if you're showing up in the same way with the same sort of messaging, talking about the same things, you really are building your thought leadership around it. What is your unique perspective that people can get on board with? And, you know, like the Simon Sinek talk about your yeah. why, you know, people getting in touch with your why. I believe what they believe. So I feel aligned to them. And people don't know that unless you're out there speaking about it and letting it be known. Yeah. And, and uh, people, a lot of people I've found with clients um, that come to me uh, and say, oh, I've got a why and I've got a mission and, and um, a vision and all that. Um, so I'm not sure I really need to do any work on that part. Maybe I need to work on the uh, uh, messaging part. And then we go and we go through it just to make sure. And a lot of the time it's not. 
it's a very superficial uh, why or vision, uh, you know, like I want to be the, you know, the best in Australia at what it is I do. Right. And I try to tell people that your vision is nothing about you and nothing about your business. Your vision has to be about the impact you want to make somewhere or something you want to see a difference with, with what you do. Yeah. And the more you go deeper into that, the more the messaging becomes so clear. Mm -hmm. because you are really diving deep into why you do what you do instead of this whole superficial thing of you know I want you know to make the world a better place which is great but yeah. you know what is it that you really why and then your mission is more or less how are you going to get there and people don't set a plan for that they just say well you know I'll just you know pop some stuff up and hopefully people will find me <laughs> not as easy as that now as we all know and we only buy from people we like and trust. So I'm afraid you've got to show up somewhere and somehow if you want a successful business these days. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to be confident about it. Yeah. And, you know, working on something like a signature talk can give you the confidence in the message because you've got the validation. Someone is there sitting with you going, yes, that message works. That story works you know, it's going to resonate because a lot of the time it's just the validation. Everyone's sitting there going, well, I don't have a story that's very interesting or, you know, no one's going to resonate with this or, you know, my message, everybody has the same sort of message. Well, that's true, but your unique slant on it is what makes it different. And yeah. once you have the confidence that it is different and unique and interesting, then you'll be out there like touting it to everybody who will listen yeah. And you get surprised, I think. A lot of people are surprised. When I do my brain dump sessions with clients where we go through those five steps of marketing foundations and we sit there and go through it, by the end of it, they're really surprised at the stuff that was inside that they didn't know about. Yes. The why they actually are doing it. And, and it comes out in the deeper work over two hours that they come out going, oh my God, is that why I'm doing it? Yeah. Oh, so I really want to help these people. But I was thinking I was trying to help everyone else, but ultimately I'm doing it because I want to help these people yeah. and by you know doing this, this and this. And then their offers come together and then they show up because they're talking to that story. Yes. You know, the, the reason they do it. I've worked with FIFO, uh, a lady that was FIFO and mm -hmm. she came back and had done counselling um, as in training to be a counsellor. And she was putting all her stuff together to try and get everyone in. Um, she wanted to help people. And that was what yes. she thought she had to do. And when we went deeper into the why, the reason she started it is she wanted to help people like her that were FIFO mums, FIFO wives mm -hmm. that were struggling. Yes. So when we went deeper into that, see how then her message changed and yes. her idea of showing up was completely authentic now. She felt authentic because she was, actually talking to her real why and I think that those sorts of things working with someone like yourself on a story um, a signature story that's yours is so important in then coming into the marketing part of trying to get that message out I think until you have it clear I, I, I can't say it's um it's it's so important I just can't even say how <laughs> it is and people forget it and they miss it and yes. then it's too late because they're overwhelmed they're not converting and they're making life hard for themselves by not actually spending the time so if anything comes out of this it's definitely that exploring that part of you and your business um, is is just the best thing you can do yeah absolutely number one key and like you said people will go oh that's going to take a lot of time and I won't do it but it actually saves time oh, in 100%. the end yeah, because you think if you've got to plan a content calendar or even if you are in business and you are big enough to have people uh, that you can outsource to, what are you telling your social media manager? What are you telling your branding, your copywriter? What are you telling them in regards to creating your content? Do you have a brand story? Do you have a brand voice? All those things that we talk about, where does that come from? You know, it, it's not that easy when you're then going to that next level too, those that are looking to level up. You know, how are you going to get that messaging out when you're having to uh, relay it to someone else yeah. to help create that? How do you do that when you're not clear yourself? And that's the reason I do what I do is so that you have something. And as you say, a signature tool, a, 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 a document or some sort of framework that you can um, then utilize again and again and have people create for you because um, it's really important to show up authentically, but consistently with yes. the same tone. Yeah, definitely. And I think the benefit there in what you're saying as well is when you're working with other people, you also want to enroll them in your vision 
And if you're not clear about what that vision is and what you're working for, you know, anyone who's who's working with you, whether it's just kind of a VA who's doing it a little bit casually, you want them to be on board with what you're doing and to feel that that same passion around it that you do. And that's how you get people who are aligned with you, not only coming to you in your business, but also working with you because then they feel more, more passionate and more interested in the work that they're doing with you as well. Yeah, 100%. And part of the why work I do includes core values because mm. that is uh, sometimes or if not all the time missed in startup phase because people think it's a corporate thing that needs to happen later when you have a team. But creating as a visionary for your business, you need to create those core values to start with because how are you then going to attract aligned clients and aligned staff if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing? And what your vision is for the business so that people can come along on that journey with you and you're not having people who are on their own agenda. Yeah. And I think that um, that this is the importance that I can't tell people enough of getting some sort of framework in place to begin with. And like you're saying, you work with your clients on creating what that looks like so that they are very clear when they're trying to attract um, new clients or if they're trying to attract new staff, they know exactly what they stand for. And uh, that's why a story, if you don't know what you stand for, how you, you know, what is it if you don't know what you stand for, you fall for everything, you know, that saying yes. is important. If you don't know what you stand for, how are you going to know what sort of staff are going to be the right fit? And, yeah. and then people get five years down the track and they have so much trouble. And I think that um, it's too late then. You have to re, you have to undo everything and undo the culture that's been created because you didn't have one in place to begin with. So uh, all of this comes together and is so important uh, in, the, in the beginning phases. Otherwise, you really have to unpick everything and do it again later. So I know I would rather do it now um, mm -hmm. and then set yourself up um, for the foundations of success as opposed to you know having the the very thin layers watching everything wobble and then trying to catch it and that just causes you drama as a business owner I mean you can only imagine if you've got staff and then having to do all that again yeah, yeah. too hard too hard too, too hard we're gonna go back we don't, don't want hard. Do, it early. do it early no we don't want hard we don't want overwhelm now I want people to come and find you so that they can look at creating their own signature talk yes. and like we said it doesn't have to be on stage this is your talk your story that you can utilize um, if you're doing keynote speaking if yes. you're doing master classes or just to show up in your own platforms with it yes. with your authentic story how, how do they find you and how can they find out more about what you do yeah, so they can, um, you can find me on Facebook, so under Casey Squires Coaching. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the same thing, Casey Squires Coaching. I'm also just finalising at the moment a little, um, a little guide to how to structure your sellout signature talk. So one of the biggest questions I get from the people I work with is, how do I structure this? You know, what is it going to look like? What should it look like? Um, so I'm putting together a little guide uh, for everyone. So I will give um, Nicola those details. and yep, I'll pop them in the show notes so yeah. that um, people can grab those because that's yes. awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah, no, that's fine. So if you want to get one of those, um, you can jump on there and I will um, send that through to you as well. So, yeah, I'd love to you know, come check out what I'm doing. If you're interested in doing a signature talk, get in touch. Um, I'd love to. I talk about it all day and I love to talk about it. So. I, I love it. I love it. No, it's been really wonderful talking because I'm um, definitely preaching from the same hymn book in regards to getting people clear. And I love that because I've seen the difference it makes and I can't, it's just don't underestimate the power it has. Uh, I know it seems like work, but it's not because it's actually important in creating um, a content that flows and who doesn't want that when you're having to create so much these days. Why make it harder for yourself if you can possibly do the framework to begin with? much easier than trying to make it up as you go along every day that's right it's been awesome to talk to you Casey and um, I'll be following you online and uh, thanks so much for your chat today amazing thanks so much Nicola it's been great to be on the podcast thank you